If you work for Maine DOT, there's a good chance you spent some time in the great outdoors. The department does all it can to keep employees safe when we're outdoors. We wear steel toe boots so our feet can't be crushed. We wear hard hats in case something drops on our head. We wear safety yellow so you can see us a mile away. But there's one thing that has confounded our safety experts. One little thing that all the hard hats, steel toe boots, and bright yellow reflective gear cannot deter. And that, my fellow employees, is the mighty tick. This tiny little predator sneaks under your clothes, into your car, settles into your home, and even attacks your ferocious family watchdog. The best protection DOT has for fighting ticks is knowledge. So, with this video, we want to arm you with the facts and some practical tips to keep you and your family tick and Lyme disease free. But first, let's tackle tick myths. You know, fake news, those little tidbits on social media you share before even finding out if it's true. Ticks die every winter. False. Temperatures have to drop below 10 degrees Fahrenheit for a long time in order for ticks to start dying off. Even in the winter, if it gets above 40 degrees, ticks can become active. Every tick carries a disease. False. Most ticks are disease-free. However, deer ticks can carry the most diseases, including Lyme, anaplasmosis, and babesiosis. You'll know if you get bitten by a tick. False. Most tick bites are painless. A tick can be latched on for a long time before you realize. You have to look for them. You can remove a tick by painting it with alcohol, nail polish, soap, Vaseline, even lighting a match next to it. False. According to the CDC, these methods may even be dangerous and increase the chances of the tick transmitting disease. You can't know when something like this is going to happen to you. Ticks can be practically invisible. According to the federal CDC, there are more than 30,000 cases of Lyme disease reported each year in the USA, and the estimated true number of individuals infected is 300,000. So how can we prevent getting a tick bite and the transmission of disease? Chuck Lebelzik has the answer. The best defense against ticks are going to be dressing appropriately in the field. So if you're out uh, walking in the woods, light-colored fabric, uh, pants and shirts are a really good idea. Uh, not because ticks don't like light colored fabrics, they just show up a lot better on lighter colored clothing. The biggest access for ticks to get to you is going to be at the cuff of your pants. So having higher boots or even gaiters that can go up over the cuff of your pants going up is going to limit the ticks initial access to your body. Um, also making sure that your shirt is tucked into your pants, again a tick is going to come up, it's going to cruise past that opening and head up again, limiting the time it's gonna be exposed to your skin. So when a tick gets on a person, uh, it will cruise for quite a long time before it settles in and starts feeding. So initially, ticks aren't gonna to like to be on the outer side of the elbow or the outer side of the knee because they get rubbed with fabric a lot. So it's gonna hang in to areas that are protected and warm and dark. So the back of your knee, the groin, undersides of your arms, back of the ears are all areas that ticks will like to settle into. Um, and it can actually take a few hours for the tick to actually settle into its spot as it starts feeding. Once a tick starts feeding, um, the real important thing is, is to get the tick off as soon as possible, which is why we advocate tick checks. Most of the bacterial diseases like Lyme disease or anaplasmosis, the tick needs to actually be feeding for 36 to 48 hours to transmit those diseases to people or pets. So certainly getting the ticks off early is gonna be of high benefit to reducing uh, disease. So we have actually two different classes of repellents that we use when we're in the field. One is a type that is applied to both skin and clothing. The other is a type applied just to clothing. Uh, ones that can go on your skin as well as your clothing are ones with a primary compound in DEET, such as Deep Woods Off. However, there is also an active compound called IR35, as well as lemon oil of eucalyptus, which is a botanical compound that also works against ticks and mosquitoes. The one uh, type of product that works on just clothing is the active ingredient uh, permethrin. And that will go on just fabric, uh, either leather, cotton, wool, or, or nylon. It will actually last for several wash cycles after a treatment, um, and then uh, can be reapplied every few weeks. Uh, but again, that does not go on, on, on skin, but just on fabric itself. If there's an, air, an article of clothing that you really uh, have to treat more than anything else, uh, the first area would be either your shoes and gaiters or your high boots. 
Um, many of the, like I said, many of the ticks are going to come in contact at the, at the waist or knee level below. So having those areas treated first is going to be a much better uh, defensive move for you to prevent ticks. So we have two kinds of ticks in Maine uh, that commonly people bump into, deer ticks and dog ticks. Uh, deer ticks tend to like forested habitats with a lot of shady canopy and dense brush. It prevents those ticks from drying out, uh, desiccating from sun and wind exposure. Dog ticks, which are a very common tick we find in the spring, but are not a vector of disease, they're just a nuisance in Maine, tend to like open, dry habitats. So a lot of areas with a lot of high grass, dune grass, uh, open, exposed areas, those tend to be dog tick habitats. One thing, if you want to actually see uh, if ticks are an area, it's a fairly high-tech technique, which is you take a, a light-colored cloth, either light white, uh, gray, beige, attach it to a pole or a dowel, and you can actually sweep the ground in an area where you're going to be working or recreating and actually look and see if ticks are present. If they're there and the fabric is either corduroy or flannel, the ticks tend to cling to the fabric fairly well and you can actually get an assessment of ticks are present uh, right in that area. However, if all these preventative measures fail, Maine DOT employees have access to tick removal kits, which include topical antibiotics, alcohol prep pads, band-aids, and a specialty tick remover for your keychain. Remember, this tick kit is available to you for free as a Maine DOT employee from the Fleet Catalog. No matter what you do to avoid them, you still need to do tick checks regularly. If you find a tick, don't panic. If they're crawling on you but have not attached, don't worry. It takes them a while to dig in, so you're not at risk while it's crawling. You can pick it off and be sure to properly dispose of it. More on that later. But if you have found one, have a thorough look for more. If it has latched onto you, you'll need to remove it with tweezers or something similar. Using fine tip tweezers, grasp the tick as close to the skin surface as possible. Pull upward with steady, even pressure. Don't twist or jerk the tick. This can cause the mouth parts to break off and remain in the skin. If this happens, remove the mouth parts with tweezers. If you can't remove the mouth easily with tweezers, leave it alone and let the skin heal. Always try to identify the tick when you pull one off. But how do you identify a tick, I hear you ask? Sarah Robinson with the Maine CDC has some insight for us. So the way to tell the difference between the deer tick and the dog tick is the scapula, which is this hard part behind their head. And on a deer tick, it's always going to be black or dark brown. On a dog tick, it's going to be white with some racing stripes. And on a deer tick, the legs will be a dark black brown as well. That's the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. If you remove a tick, it's always best to identify it. If it's a deer tick, it's sometimes great to save it in case you need it for identification or for testing purposes later. We normally tell people if you get a tick off with you within 24 hours, you're relatively safe. So the first thing you always do when you find a tick is remove it. Make sure you get it off of you as soon as possible. The best way to kill a tick is to drop it in alcohol. Rubbing alcohol works, any kind of alcohol works. Most people at a campfire at night in the woods aren't going to have rubbing alcohol. <laughs> with them, but sometimes they will have other options. The alcohol will preserve the tick, it will kill it, um, so that if you need to have it identified or you need to take it to your doctor later, it will still be preserved. There are a couple of other ways to kill a tick. Um, they're pretty hardy, so it's not easy to kill them. Heat will kill a tick, so if you put it in a bag and put it under a light, that will kill it. Um, if you wrap it in tape, it will prevent it from moving around, and so that will kill it. Uh, water does not kill ticks, so flushing a tick down the toilet won't, it will get rid of it from your house, it will not kill it. If you develop symptoms that you think might be due to a tick-borne illness within 30 days of a tick bite, you should call your provider. And some important things to mention to your provider when you talk to them, that you think you had a tick bite, if you still have the tick, you would want to bring it with you so they can help identify it where you might have acquired the tick, how long ago the tick might have bitten you, and where the tick bite might have occurred. These are all important information that will help your doctor make a diagnosis. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by all of this information, but just remember, when Lyme is diagnosed quickly, it can be treated simply with antibiotics. The trick is to catch it quickly. According to the CDC, some of the initial indicators of Lyme disease include flu-like symptoms and EM rash, which often appears as a bullseye. 
Keep in mind, this rash doesn't always appear, and when it does, it isn't necessarily at the location of the tick bite. When Lyme disease isn't diagnosed quickly and goes untreated, it becomes much more serious. Infection can spread to the joints, the heart, and the nervous system. You should seek medical attention if you develop any of these symptoms after a tick bite. Lyme disease can be life-changing, making it all the more important to prevent contact with ticks and catch the inevitable tick bites quickly. So, let's recap. Use a lint roller on kids and pets frequently. Dress appropriately when spending time outdoors. Use an EPA-approved repellent. Do tick checks immediately after returning inside and do a thorough tick check daily. Save and date your ticks by preserving them in alcohol, especially if it's a deer tick. Educate your family about ticks, especially kids who can be the most susceptible. July and August are peak times for Lyme disease infections. If you develop flu-like symptoms in the middle of summer, see a doctor immediately. Stay vigilant. Remember these steps, and you and your family can be tick and Lyme-free for a long time.